forgot to let you know I'm going live so we're gonna definitely in discord So today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to utilize all this scrap pieces over here to do smaller projects that some people might throw these things away for when you don't have to. Yeah. A couple of examples that just popped into my head when I was looking at these and then I'm going to try and figure out a couple of things to utilize in the process. These are the scrap pieces that I'm going to be working with today for the most part. Got some additional ones over here. Uh, I got a whole box full of scraps so that I can utilize them in these ways. But let's start with something simplistic looking, but will ultimately provide a unique shape. Right. The quickest one for me to see aside from the set aside ones that I know. This right here, to me, it looks like eyebrow ridges and a snout of some sort of muzzle creature, or creature that has a muzzle. So by doing this, I'll be able to round off the nose, give it more of a snout look. We can pull it back a little bit down here in the back section of the head to give an actual curve to the head, and then slightly round off the brow ridges and we can actually make a creature's head with this and that would be useful for say a dragon burst through the building but it's too big to fit in the building but you know people are still going to attack a dragon head I would hope so that's what we can do for this one Starting to look 
and the rounded shape that I was looking for. Cut a little bit of this excess over here. So, some creatures have a raised nostrils at the tip. So I'm gonna go a little bit further back and thin out just slightly the upper part of the snout that we're doing here, which will also at the same time give me more eyebrow ridge to work with. And keep rounding off the snout part, but a lot of things have, such as a dog or something like that, have a flat snub at the, at the tip of the snout. Flat snub with the rounded shape and then the eyebrow ridge. when they have an eyebrow ridge. Actually, I have a divot for the individual eyes. That's why I just carved in there, but it's a little hard to see. You guys can see it. There's a little dimple right there. As well, let's have two different eyes, and then we can also round off the edges. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and add in a couple of fangs along the way. And that will be by cutting upward at a slight angle from about, say, a quarter to a third the way from the bottom lip, or bottom jaw, at an angle to give us that 45 degrees until we get to where we want the roof of the mouth to be. And then we're going to go backwards flat along it. I'm not going to go too far back, but now I'll give us a flappy mouth. And then, a little bit back from that, uh, from that 45 degree angle here, I'm going to want to do another 45 degree angle downward ever so slightly, or so, that's a little bit more than 45 and then slice a thin layer out from there, meeting where the top of the mouth flap is. And that will give you, let's see if you can see it, a nice little hooked teeth look to it. Now you can carve out individual teeth from that, simply doing the 45 degree angle teeth. Okay, I'm gonna have the couple or it's gonna be four feet or four teeth on the top, and there's going to be two teeth on the bottom. Alright, 
Okay. <clears throat> and just by cutting out those little wedges, see if we can get a good camera angle for you guys. So, the top teeth, there's four of them there now. And then the bottom two, there's two. Actually better. Charge of the teeth. So uh, let's see. I got a little extra bit there that I can snip off. Now, most creatures' bottom jaw is smaller than the top jaw, though they do meet in order to be able to seal together. Fractionally smaller. I always try to make it look like it is actually able to close its mouth. That's with foam very easy just by simply smooshing it together and see if it lines up relatively well. Head is a little lopsided. Okay. Now, this will obviously looked a lot better if it were painted, but we do have actually a little node snout lines here. Very slight something there. Alright, so I have made a creature head. For simplicity's sake, let's just call it an alligator head. Alright, so we have the top teeth there with, I don't know if you can really see it's the little nose divots. We have the eyebrow divots. We have the actual eye line, all curved in so that way it's slightly more round. We have the bottom two teeth and curved under jaw so that way it all will sit nice and smooth. And there we go. You can also have it say if a creature was pinned underneath a boulder during a, lot, a landslide, they can deal with trying to save it while it has big old choppers. And if you got the painting abilities, you can paint the tongue and additional teeth in there, if it has a tongue. You can paint the eyes. Alright. Right so, with a small scrap, I'm going to put it off to the side, because I think everything should eventually be useful. Small scrap pieces, I probably going to end up using for decorations or additional fine details on pieces. <clears throat> Alright, so next thing is check the swords. Right. 
Uh, maybe these two for later. So, small triangle wedge piece. Doesn't look like all that much. Most people probably would throw this away or probably attach it to another piece to make like a rooftop or something like that. However, yes, I am going to make a stand of some sort that you could put a wrapped creature in a ball in or some sort of storage container. It'd be too difficult. <clears throat> So all I did was a thick triangle, and like I tend to do, 45 degree angle cuts towards the center point, but I didn't make sure to cut all the way down because I wanted to rip out the inside tiny triangle that was left attached, I just ripped that right out so that way it has a little nice conclave in there. And this is actually a nice little template of what you can fit inside there so if you're going to make something to sit on top of it you can use that piece to make sure it's bigger than that All right. <clears throat> now I like triangle pieces to have points coming to them so I'm going to then make a point on each of the sides for the most part fine-tune it in a minute here by shaping off a triangle of the corners thus making the straight up sides going inward now towards the center and I'll be able to use those later on because just go with this actually uh, one of the things that I made recently off screen was a little helmet now this helmet doesn't have too many additional details past the giant spikes and hooks that are on it. So you can take one of these and glue it in place along the way to give it tiny ridges. You can also make some of the spikes more pronounced or have a blade going on along the top of it. That's just by adding an additional little tiny piece of foam. Uh, if you get enough of these, you can make tendrils, because uh, there, there's a spell in D&D. What is it called? Ooh, I'm... I think it's like Wrath of Hadar or something like that. Um, and you summon a circle that has milky white tendrils, which, funnily enough, foam is milky white. So you would have just these, and it would be like a tinted black dome or have these protruding out of black ink which you could do by making the shape and size of it out of hot glue on parchment paper and then just painting it black and then attaching these to it in random locations along the way that way you would have little triangular tentacles It's just another thing that you can do with the tiny scraps. Add very minute details. Alright, back to this one though. So what I did was I kept shaping off the outside until it became fairly thin at the top so that way we have points. And now to make those points into actual spiky points, I'm going to do those 45 degree angles that I love so much to do. Going towards the parts that we've already carved, and it'll leave this nice little point right there for part of your stand. All right. 
right, so there is my three point stand. Let's see if I have something that I can demonstrate it with real quick. something you'll be able to see all right so i have this little potion die that i had found or that i got off of the kickstarter and there you go sits there nice and pretty uh, any rounded object will be able to sit there in this and you can position it in any way if it's round enough but that is just the fine points on the top now you can do additional detailing as long as you have your three-pronged support structure, it should be pretty stable. So I'm going to actually carve out little archways at the bottom to give it almost like a double-ended stand. This way is going to be inoperable. Just to give it a couple of finer details. Because if you happen to have players like me, they would very much appreciate the finer details. Okay. And by carving out these little tiny uh, slivers in a arching pattern, I've made, ooh, that's horrible, I'll send it right there. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. Alright, that's good enough. Alright, so you have your top part that has the three spikes that can hold stuff, and then the bottom part, which is the three arches, that'll just make that look like it has a little bit of depth to it when it sits on something. Okay. Alright. So that's a little stand, and hey, let's see. Ta da! Little guy stays on the stand. Do this large wedge. It's just a big giant triangular wedge that I happened to cut off of something. Nothing super special. However, I did notice that the wavy patterns up here kind of reminded me of fire. So there's a spell in DD. Uh, that's why I reference majority of on my screen. Uh, that is called Wall of Flames. Yes. Or Wall of Fire, depending on the edition that you play it on. Uh, so, it's only a very thin wall of fire, so I'm going to be carving down this wedge into kind of almost like an L shape, so that way it can still stand up, but it'll have thinnerness to it, and it will try and add some flame look to it. But the vast majority of that detail would be in the painting aspects, so this white foam won't work very well for that part. So I'm going to do my best. So, if the spell is only about a foot wide, and these are about five feet things. say measure twice cut once however with this type of carving you don't always know the exact distance that you're going to be wanting to do it because it might look wrong once you get to do the distance so what i 
tend to do is I will do like 80 or 90% of the way cutting this way and then I'll try and cut it to meet where I want it to go. And then we can just pull it right out. Now this little wedge, you can see how it's very easy to bend and stuff. You can use this to either make a type of archway that is like only partially, like if it's in a abandoned or destroyed ruins, you can have this up against a wall and there used to be an archway there, but it's all blocked away or crushed down on that one side. Could also use it to wrap something else. Excuse the yawn, please. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So we got our wall of flames here. We need to shut this part down a little bit because uh, a little bit more got through than intended. this tiny sliver if you're doing a larger detailed piece you can shape this into either a fin a hook or something and it's very tiny and almost see-through um, but if you glue this along the actual edge of it such as between these you can make it a webbing go in between spikes or tendrils or even make it into a makeshift face mask and they would be able to pivot up. So, more options and these spikes are just super glued into place with Dollar Tree brand super glue. I think it's called crazy glue. But uh, yeah. They're pretty sturdy on there. And if I really wanted to, I could rip them off and use them for other things, but yeah, I can keep a project finished. Okay. Wall of Flames. Now, the Wall of Flames is technically supposed to be opaque so you can't see through it, and that's all fine and dandy. Um, however, you still want to see some details in there, and that can be done couple of ways. If you, the way that I have this here, it's still thick enough to slice down the middle of if I do it very carefully, and that will allow it to have two layers, front and our top and the bottom layer, or front and back, whatever you want to call it. And if, when you do that is if you peel it back and then paint on some of the flame details on the inside and then put it back together and then do more details on the outside, it gives it more depth towards those uh, flame details. However, you'd probably have to do darker details on the inside because it is a layer of white styrofoam. And then depending on how much details you put on the outside, as well. Alright, so I'm going to try and be very careful to cut this in half in the way that I just described. Okay, and there we go. That's what I was talking about. You have yourself a nice 
sliver of this peeled back. Now what you can do is you can hold it back, paint an image of some flames on here in darker colors such as the reds, although usually it's the lighter colors are towards the center, but whatever you feel like it's your art. Um, so you do the darker colors so that way they show through this and then you can do additional yellows and oranges on the outside in the patterns. Now, <clears throat> I'm actually not going to adjust this top part because I like the unevenness of this cut as well as when I pull this back, it too is uneven in its own way. So when I do eventually start doing painting type stuff, I'll be able to come back to this and I'll do what I'm describing. I'm uh, painting them in different layers. And then if you want to make it structurally sound again, so that way it's not, you know, peeling back, just do a bead of uh, super glue along the edges in a rectangle, seal it back together and you'll have one nice piece again. That's pretty much what I'm going to do for that, however, let's see how sturdy that is. Alright, so, it would be able to be used, and I'm actually just going to shave off a tiny little bit more of this bottom layer. Oh, actually. Let's see. This is just a balance test to see which way is a lot heavier. That's definitely the taller part is. So I'm actually going to leave the thick base of this. It's only for support structure wise. All right. Okay. And more of these tiny little pieces. Now like this little thing, it is perfectly flat on one side. So that, that's actually a tiny rock or a boulder. It's a little triangular, so you can round off the edges a little bit, but yeah, that could, that could be terrain boulder. Simple as that. Uh, that's just extra scrap. Boom, we made a boulder. Alright, so we have our nice little triangle things here. Now these can be used in a few different ways, but it all depends on the type of project that you're doing. Um, also depending on the size. Uh, but if you're making a decent sized building and you want some nice like support pillars or columns, that, but you don't want to do the full five foot wide columns, that's what these little wedges are good for. Because you can shave these into basically whatever shape you want that is like a pillar. By shaving off the edges, I have this. Uh, I'm not even sure what that would be. It's almost like a diamond, like an actual diamond shape. Not the four sided diamond. Yeah, you can have those, and these ones would be glued into place. If your culture that you are creating these things for has some sort of 
Asian um, influence. You can actually use the triangles on top of these to make a specific type of archways that they have there. And they would be rounded pillars or poles with a triangular top, primarily to allow snow to fall off. But it also keeps rain from doing additional damage to it and just makes it last longer against the weather. So that's one of the options that you could do. Shape down to the this. Uh, you can also use these in a way of terrain as well because, um, let's say, inside of a dungeon, there's a location where you have a switch that's on the opposite side of a zone. And you're gonna set this up so that way your dexterous person can make their uh, big debut basically. Well, Instead of just a flat floor that has hidden pressure plates, you can actually make rows of certain amounts of spikes. And some of them could do stuff and others could not. But inside these spikes there would be, or could be, footholds. Allowing your player to land in between the spikes. And I would say it would take like a dexterity check or an acrobatics check or something like that to aim for those locations and you can have them go snug up against the walls if you happen to have the exact width of your dungeon and that will give it nice terrain and you can actually line multiple of these up in a row so that way you can make it basically like an obstacle course. Um, that's actually the thought if you happen to be um, one of the owners of those little tiny, it's like a sketch deck I think it is called. Um, the, the, the tiny bicycles that you operate with your fingers and then the uh, skateboards as well. I think it's tech deck is what it's called. Um, you can actually make a field for a dirt bike one or one of the uh, BMX bike versions of these by doing the same thing because you can line these all up and they would have to go through them in the proper order or along the proper path I should say. Yeah. So that's this one which is the rounded pillar or pole type thing, you can use it for a balance beam or even support structures. Or if you want, you can make a tiny little archway for smaller creatures to end up passing through, and that's just by bending it in half. Sorry. There you go. Bending it in half like that in order to make a... Uh, you can make it a narrow passageway, because bending it this way makes it chunky. However, bending it the opposite way against the curve makes it a narrow one. So you can actually have like secret passageways that you can't couldn't normally see if you're just walking by due to the narrowness of them. Okay, so that's that. Now, if you happen to have slightly bigger triangle pieces, you can <coughs> sorry, make more elaborate shapes into them if you want. So what I did here was I cut out a downward line and then a cross and then a 45 degree angle to meet where that, that last cross met. And it gives it these hooks. By doing those, you can either do it to where um, a giant or something has these and they throw their shield up um, and hook onto a ledge and then climb up through the shield. You can also have it be a weapon rack or something by 
making two of these, attaching them to a wall, and then hooking them into place. By doing this, you also, if you do them fine enough and then curve this into a circle, you can make a what looks like a saw blade type thing. Those little spiky hook things popping out. To which I can actually show you a little bit easier on that one. So, if you want to make a saw blade rotating looking object, make sure that you can put it into a round circle. <clears throat> and then take your uh, blade of some sort, and then you just do 45 degree angle cuts a little bit down into it. Don't go all the way through, just, and then about, you know, a centimeter or so further than that. Just keep doing that. And I'm only going the thickness of the actual blade down at the 45 degree angle. So that way it prevents it from cutting through and also makes them almost uniform in shape and size. Alright, so once you did those 45 degree angle cuts, it still looks like a normal pillar until you curve it and then you have your spikes or a saw blade or you can attach this to and make it like all-terrain vehicle wheels so what you would do is you would take this little flat piece right here and you would glue it to that little flat piece and by doing that, you're allowing it to seal together and you'll not have it actually rounded during the sealing process. You want them to be more lined up. So you kind of want it squished like that. Uh, let that glue dry and then when it releases, it should be pretty darn rounded. And you'll have a nice spiked uh, circular object. Well, this concept also works for uh, a little bit larger pieces. Um, this is one of my larger pieces because it doesn't fit on a D&D character. Uh, but if I were to... Get this in here. Place it here, have it nice and uh, curved towards where it meets up properly with that. And then bend it along the helmet ridge. It's a little hard to see. Yeah, so that way you can dig on there's that nice arch. Yeah, I glued this to the back of this helmet from the brow line all the way to the back of the nape. You would actually be able to have nice rigid spikes going along instead of these three giant spikes. <clears throat> That's that. And that. These are just ideas to be utilized for the triangle pieces. And the triangle pieces are actually just the scrap from. Use this bit of scrap to show you. So if you have a nice squared off thing here, let's go with this little piece because. You have a nice squared thing, but you want it to make it angled or rounded. Eventually, you're going to cut off that corner piece. Well, that corner piece is these triangles. And again, you make tiny little incisions even on these ones. This one's considerably smaller than the one that I just showed you. Always being careful not to cut yourself. You know, I don't remind you all enough of that, but. I hope if you're doing this type of thing, you have some common sense. Right, and then what I we have the nice little arch, and it also makes it really flexible when you do this. So you can even twist it and have these crazy spikes coming outward. Yeah, and it always wants to go back unless you actually secure it in place. 
benign and spikes. Now you can have a trap that it looks very harmless with a nice little archway, but then when you go underneath the archway, it collapses with spikes coming down. So, it's entirely possible to have quite a variety of interesting aesthetics with the spikes. And all it is is just shaving off a corner piece to make it more round, and then you make really super thin ones such as these ones, when you shave them down even more. Now these ones that are super thin are a little bit harder to uh, use, but you can save up enough of them and you can make some crazy tentacly creature, or you can spiral them into making some sort of pattern, because just having like a jagged pattern could make it look more corrupted. wrap them around in other objects, gluing them in place to give it a little bit more depth. You can extend something by adding it onto the end of it. So, those are those options. At least those for now, let my brain percolate on how I want to show off more of those triangle pieces. Scrap from the firewall. Alright. Let's do this one. And I'll actually use it in combination with one of these other ones. Look at that one. Okay. Alright. So I have this one, which. You know, that really looks like too much, but it's, it's a wedge that I ended up cutting out from a larger thing that I was doing. I think I did a, I'm pretty sure this is the Nike swoosh I did for a coworker. Um, I just scrap from it. But what I can do with this is it actually fits quite nicely for a pen, or to do it this way probably. And then when you have this pen, this is more of a prop than an actual movable thing. You can attach a feather to it, and you have yourself a quill. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attempt to make it so that way I can attach this quill into, or the feather, into the end part, which I just cut out a little wedge from the fat spike. It's just as a simple check to see if it could work, it does. So now it's just more for finer details that I'm going to be working on, and then also securing that so that way it doesn't just flop out. Alright, so, don't want to compromise the structural security of, or stability of, the part where it's going to be attaching to the feather, but we need to round it off and then make it to a fine point just by pulling off the weakest bits over here okay so that is what i'm working with now is this little nub i'm going to bring that nub to a point in this dimension going this direction so that way i'll have a oh wait going to cut it and then have a nice flat section not, not an actual like a normal point not rounded so let's start by doing that all right so that's where the point would be and then we're going to do a tiny point and a flat section reason I did that is because if you actually look at how the quills are made, 
comes to a super fine point off of a uh, skinnier section where the ink will drip down onto it from a reservoir that is up in here. And that's where the calligraphy would be in. And theoretically, if I actually do this right, it would be operational as a calligraphy pen. Because the ink wouldn't destroy the styrofoam. So, we can make a styrofoam calligraphy pen. <laughs> And making more of these little triangular tendril things. Okay, so I have pretty much how I want it to look like. It's a little flimsy. That's because I bent it a little bit too much. Got it down slightly too much on this arch right here. However, it'll work. All right, so kind of looks like a bird's neck, but uh, you know, I have it going to where it'll. Bit nicely. I can shave this nub down here a little bit because I felt uncomfortable just now. It's gonna re round it. detail on the feather, I think I'm actually going to pre-glue this in place and then do the detail on the feather. So let me find my oh it's actually right here. Okay. See Dollar Tree creates glue. Nothing special about it. What I do like about this crazy glue is that it comes in this neat little container that supports it upright when you're not using it. So that way the it doesn't all just congeal at the tip. You can just squeeze it out ever so slowly. Alright. Then it comes with 
the stagger thing by itself. There you go. Alright. So, I want it to be this way. Now I just gotta let this sit for a second so that way it seals into place. Explain a couple of other things along the way while that dries. Um, so these are other wedges that I have cut out, but they're more of a shallow wedge in order to get this um, a wider one. So let me see if I can give an example of that. Which. I might fail to use this little piece. <clears throat> so what it is, it's this is actually a rounded corner piece from the other chunk of foam that I have. So if I'm going to round it, let me cut off this wedge real quick. So I have a rounded corner. Then I'm going to uh, this is the actual top part. So this is the part that we sit like this going to add a very shallow angle cut along there keeping this edge as thin as possible while making this edge thicker and by doing that it allows you to make thick on one edge and thin on the other almost like a wing or a feather so that's all I was doing with these, and I was doing it for other things, um, but it has left me with these nice wedges. That's almost completely dry. Cool. All right. I don't know. They they look like wings, or specifically like a singular feather, and then this would look like a necrotic or sickly wing and that is a couple of different versions now if you happen to get these or are able to make them perfectly symmetrical so you have two of the same block and then you just cut them off in the same angles and all that uh, you can attach them to the back of things such so as like this could be either attached this way, I like this being attached to it, to make um, longer reaching wings that would be uh, like curved down to be more like a weapon type, not really utilized for flying, or you can reverse it and have this be the attaching point, and that's your elbow, to where it allows more wind control when actually trying to flap, so you can give it wings to fly with. So, if your character or your miniature is the size for it, you can actually have them be there with that as wings. That's pretty nice. The sickly one actually uh, is one that you could straighten out and glue along the edge of, say, a building or a scenery type thing. And that could be more of those flames that could just be painted on ever so slightly. And then you can have it wrapped around, say, a, 
the, the building and you have different height flames throughout it and if you were to like say sever this part put it on the other side of a door they could be able to see that this the flames are circled but the door is still passable and stuff like that all right all right it's nice and secured in there all right so this is the feather that we're going to be utilizing for the quill and uh, it's got a curve to it which I guess it's alright. A lot of feathers do have curves to them. They're not perfectly flat. No. So I'm going to try and shave this side just slightly so that way it's a little bit flatter instead of having a giant wedge. I'm hoping that'll make it look a little bit more like an actual feather rather than just this big giant slice of foam. Thing is, since I'm shaving it off, I made a thin one again. So again, thin ones can be used for all sorts of stuff, such as flames or tiny wings. I'm actually going to do a two-parter on this because on the flat side here, like this is perfectly smooth. Um, and that's where I got the, or to get off the top of the foam piece that this was from, whereas this part is a little bit rigid. And the way I designed it was the uh, tip be face down so that with the rigid part is actually at me. And so is the uh, frayed edge. But it all depends on the way you attach this as well as the angle that you put the ink part or the tip part but that is entirely up to you on how you do your own and I just happen to do it this way so I'm gonna commit to it and I will try and round off this thick edge so that way it's not just a square wing well I'm sure they existed at some point where wings do not exist anymore tiny little shreds you can use them for finer details on bigger pieces or you can use them to make tendril type objects or vines that's an option if you are a construction person that have made like a tower you can utilize those to make vines along the edges pre-paint them and then attach them in place still sturdy down here just above where it connects and it goes to a nice thin point so it's nowhere near as thick as it was even just by shaving these tiny pieces off it managed to make it considerably thinner now i'm going to try and make this bottom part more of a straight ish line while keeping the jaggeds which instead of having it just go boop, straight out there, I'm going to try and cut out tiny little chunks in there. So that way I can make those rays 
a little bit more pronounced. And I do want this to be frayed because the more a quill is used, the less pretty it gets. So this would be a fairly old quill. Or from a bird that was not well kept. Because who says all quills have to be for pretty birds? Alright. So by doing it this way, I have a nice curvature going along with that. We got the ridge line of the actual feather. And you can still see through it on the very tips here, but you can't see through it over on this side, except for right up at this top part. That's the thinnest part of it. It has been super glued into place, so it's pretty sturdy in there. And then it's got the grip where your hand would be, and then the section where it would be the ink well, or the ink and then you have your actual ink dispenser, which is that pointy tip bit. And there we go. So what I managed to make for that. Alright. So additionally, for the people who are into sci-fi or more modern age something like this it's just a chunk of scrap that happens to have a point where three sides come up to it but then it's got a nice flat section on one uh, let's see here hmm. that's a good way to demonstrate what i'm talking about yeah let's use the cell phone all right so say this is the object that you are trying to make a cockpit for and put down. There is now a cockpit on there because it is raised enough to have one person there in there. And then it will also uh, slide back. Or if you want to do it like this way, it could be a wider front vehicle. And you'll be going like that. So that's just an idea for you. I don't have anything to really attach that to as I'm not doing sci-fi stuff, but it's an idea for scraps to be utilized in every fashion. Uh, and along those same lines, you can have these or the thin strips being placed along it, so that way it'll actually slide along those or it makes it more dynamic, allowing it to slip through sections easier. Or, and then this could also be another one because it's a wider one so you could actually have two people in there than the one singular and it is still relatively aerodynamic except on the back part but you can easily shape that down uh, so again you can make yourself a little protrusion cockpit or a bunker type object on a larger piece such as a spaceship or a plane um, but again, I don't have those, so I'm just giving you ideas in that fashion. Uh, apologies for the on again. Um, these are just triangular pieces or wedges that I managed to cut out, and they can be utilized in so many ways that it is ridiculous. But just a couple of the ways is if you need a um, like part of a ship to break apart, you can super glue them together with tiny pieces of glue, like in dots, after you've painted them. So that way they look nice and uniform together. But once damage is done, you can literally just crack it and peel it apart. Uh, so that way you can do more detail for your uh, players or even yourself in how they are actually doing this uh, like pre-made damage is already there such as for instance if you are playing a star wars version and you know for a fact the death star is going to break or a star destroyer is going to break in half you can already have it pre-set out and um, have it all painted nice and smooth and looking really pretty once damage is done, you just pick it up and you crack it, freak out your players a little bit, and then you place it at these angles, allowing 
the players to understand that yeah they just cut a ship in half uh, you can do that either direction also um, but that's just one of the options that you can do for pieces that are similar in shape and size that can be put together alternatively you can basically make like super ramps for uh for like terrain or anything like that um, if they're pliable you can bend them to make certain types of hooks although um, aside from cutting out a chunk inside on the inside of the hook and then gluing it together i'm not sure how you would keep that shape uh, that's not a shape that i'm using able to keep but you can you know make a row of hooks Excuse me again. Not sure why I'm yawning. I got plenty of sleep last night, even. Uh, but, so, uh, yeah, you can do quite a bit with pretty much anything. And scrap is only scrap if you don't want to use it. But if you do want to use it, you can make all sorts of shapes useful. Here's another cockpit type thing. Um, if you are willing to attach pieces to other pieces, you can make this one could be carved down to be a great sword or a giant's blade uh, throughout the D and D style by just carving this down into the shape of a giant's sword, which would be just chopping off these edges and then going up along this line and then attaching a tiny little handle or even incorporating the handle into your carvings in this process. That. Let's see how long is the stream been going? Well, the stream is actually pretty much over. It's gone a little bit longer than I normally do. Okay, so let's just do a real quick recap on what we've done today. We made the quill that just needs to be painted and then it will be nice and sturdy to go. It's got the feather with the uh, rays and then the arch super glued in place along the handle of a quilt that I made to my personal designs you can make your own uh, I made a wall of fire with a split down the middle of it to add additional detail on the inside so that way you can seal it back together and have depth to your fire instead of just having a single color uh, I have a creature head that I made and that was just a tiny rectangle piece that had a little ridge. I pronounced the ridge and gave it additional eyebrows. Um, I gave it four teeth on the top, two teeth on the bottom, and the nose has a little ridge there as well. So easily classified as a creature. I made a tiny little three-pronged stand that you can place objects onto that has depth on the under part so that way it looks more than just a triangle piece with three points. Um, as a side effect of that stand, I made a boulder. Simplest thing in the world. Uh, and then I have these, which is the tiny, smaller pieces of the spikes that you can roll in order to make them appear. They disappear when held straight. The larger version of that is this one. So you can see that a little bit easier. And then straight, it's perfectly fine. And then you can even have it to where it would snap down. So, and the spikes would pop out. Right. And then we have little divots that you could say damage would be here, no damage would be here. A acrobatic person could manage to make those differences in trying to go through a room that has a bunch of these objects everywhere. Um, I made a uh, odd little wedge system here that could be either a weapon stand if you have two of them next to each other, so a, you would just slot your weapons into there. Um, or you could potentially make it a siege type object where a larger creature could use those hooks to attach to a wall. Say if you put a ladder on the back of this, had a giant attach these to 
of the enemy wall. You can just have your smaller units climb right up it. And that's just an interesting way to do some combat right there. Feel free to use that. Then I also just made a smaller pillar that nothing too fancy about it. However, if you uh, have a culture that is based off of Asian descent or Asian influence, you can add the rounded poles to a triangle uh, roof type thing to make an archway of their designs. I hope you all enjoyed today. I know I had some fun making stuff with the scraps of other projects. So just remember that just because it is scrap does not mean it is trash. Alright everybody, hope you have a great day. Thanks for coming.